people. Tall, short, fat, skinny, angry, happy. No two exactly alike among the Earth's 3 billion, 400 million human beings. Yet for all their differences, they share certain biological activities. They thirst, they hunger, they age, they sleep, they dream. What is a dream? Science doesn't know. Only poets, philosophers, and songwriters dare speculate openly on nature's unfathomable mystery. The German poet Goethe referred to dreams as whimsical pictures. Philosopher Sigmund Freud said that dreams represent the realization of a wish. Three songwriters, Mac David, Al Hoffman, and Jerry Livingston, collaborated to suggest that a dream is a wish your heart makes. the excitement and pleasures of an amusement park is not the exclusive privilege of the very young. Grown men share those dreams. But since grown men feel compelled to make everything sound efficient and businesslike, they call it planning or expanding facilities or making capital investments. Use whatever terms they will, it's all Freudian dreaming. And an amusement park is nothing more or less than the realization of their wishes. Take the Coney Island and Lake Como Railroad as a typical example. It is the realization of more than two years of wishing and building. If this seems like a long time to develop a single attraction, consider the extraordinary affection lavished on this one ride. The beautiful little engine is a one-third scale model of the famous 424 CP Hunting. The real Huntington was built in New Jersey in 1863 and shipped clear around Cape Horn in a square rigger to pull the first train to Stockton, California. For 14 years, it pulled the private car of the governor of California. Today, the Huntington stands in a Sacramento City Park, a permanent monument to the courageous men who won the West. The trackage of Coney's version stretches 4,678 feet into the forbidding Ohio Valley wilderness of 150 years ago. There, passengers see authentic models of Indians wearing authentic costumes, what little there is of them, sporting authentic roach hairdos, brandishing authentic weapons. All of this immense detail was meticulously researched by Winfield Hubbard, Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's chief special effects designer. A rather costly and elaborate dream, wouldn't you say? Yet this is one passenger train that isn't losing customers. In all fairness, it ought to be noted that one man's dream may be another man's nightmare. Here's a short demonstration of that point.
obviously not everyone's cup of tea. Fantasy can be rooted in fact. The fact is that felled trees are cut into logs, and the logs are often moved to sawmills by water in long troughs called flumes. Out west, where the great forests stand, and where logging even today is a considerable industry, logs move from woods to mills through roaring flumes. It's a historical fact that foolhardy loggers rode the wildly tumbling logs for sport, and thus was born the idea for an exciting amusement park ride. This shows what can be done with an idea, and a half a million dollars. Not many real flumes, we dare say, match the capacity of this one, where 30,000 gallons of water surge through its pumps each minute. Coney Island have many admirable qualities. Self-restraint, however, doesn't seem to be one of them. When they first dreamed of erecting a genuine Swiss sky ride, there was no adequate space for it in all of Coney's 155 acres. The problem was solved by literally rebuilding the entire mall. The rocket ride and Ferris wheel were uprooted and moved to new locations. In their places went this magnificent prototype of a genuine Swiss chalet to serve as the main boarding point for a trip high over the park. The colorful gondolas travel over three towers, the highest being 96 feet above ground. The ride stretches 1,200 feet from one end of the International Mall to the other and affords a magnificently sweeping view of the park and the rolling hills of Ohio and Kentucky. To improve the already spectacular view from above, a European fountain was installed at the east end of the formal mall. Medical history tells us that most early attempts to interpret dreams took the form of mechanistic research, modeled after experiments in the physical sciences. In the mid-19th century, for example, a Frenchman named Louis Ferdinand Alfred Maury had an assistant drop water on his forehead while he slept. A similar experiment must have been conducted by Coney designers. How else explain their seeming obsession with water? There was the flume and the fountain. Then there's a sparkling mountain brook the Tivoli Fountain straight from Denmark, a lake, a bay for the Turnpike's Causeway, the children's old mill, and an unbelievable swimming pool. Coney claims loud and long that this is the largest recirculating water pool in existence. No one has yet disputed that claim. The surface exceeds 80,000 square feet. The capacity is an incredible three million gallons. Someone once had the idea of floating a 60-foot luxury yacht in the middle of the pool for the purpose of filming a television commercial. Fortunately, cooler and drier heads prevailed. As if all this liquid opulence weren't enough, the entire park is completely bordered on one side by the beautiful Ohio, one of America's great rivers. A 
Uh, some corny dreams, of course, are relatively commonplace. For an amusement park, that is. After all, everybody has at least a couple of hot dog stands. One of Coney's is this German beer garden. A simple, unpretentious $75,000 structure carefully modeled after the real thing, as studied by Coney architects at the Munich Oktoberfest. Another fine example of uncontrolled reverie is the recreation building, which houses the games. A simple shelter doubtless would have sufficed, but at Coney only French Normandy would do with an elaborate clock and a share of the park's 32,000 flowers in the central court. Coney architects travel the world for ideas, even if only to put a roof over the customer's heads. If you remember your Latin, you may remember the writer Horace. And if you're that good, you may even remember that it was Horace who said, after midnight, dreams are true. Unfortunately, the little ones can't wait till after 12 midnight to have their dreams come true. So, Coney moves the starting time ahead to 12 noon. If there were dreams for sale, which ones would you buy? What's the secret of the long continuing popularity of amusement parks? A park is a microcosm of entertainment. Here in narrow confines, you find all the elements that appeal so strongly to the American spirit. Speed, nostalgia, contact, adventure, action, beauty, excitement, friendship, relaxation. It's all here, the embodiment of everyone's dreams of good times and high spirits, even an appeal to our innate desire to start Wilson did, and around this basic urge to perform, he built a fabulously successful Broadway show, The Music Man. Coney has lots of music men, students who travel hundreds of miles to march and countermarch down that matchless mall. These are the dreamers acting out their dreams. But now it's time to put your dreams away for another day. The day when you visit that enduring American institution, the amusement park. Meanwhile, we hope all your dreams are good dreams. And may they all come true. <laughs>